I hope so. I've had a really busy week. Lots of cakes going out this week. We've had Batman, uh, we've had unicorns, we've had a chocolate overload cake that had so much chocolate on the top and it was a chocolate fudge cake with all ganache around the side. That was rather delicious. Um, I wish I was having that one. Um, so loads of chocolate brownies have gone out this week as well. So it's been a really busy week. Uh, so I'm ready for the weekend. I'm ready to sit down and relax um, and do a little bit of crafting. So I hope you are too. Um, I'm starting the video today a little bit different than normal because I've had some really nice questions that have been sent in. And rather than just answering these people um, and I thought it'd be really a really good idea to share it because one of two of the things that they're asking, I thought maybe you might need to know the answers to as well. So um, just a few of the questions, but please keep asking me whatever it is you want to ask. And I've also, I've only had a couple of photos sent to me of what you've been doing and they've been amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, and those people have got the boxes with the nice treats inside. So hopefully they've received theirs in the next couple of days. Um, so please be in touch and send me all your photos. And remember, it's not how fantastic it looks. It's just the fact that you've taken the time to do it. So uh, I really would like to see those. So a couple of the questions that I've got. Um, one here was, uh, when I make eyes, they aren't the same size. Help me. And that was from Lily. So best thing I can say to you, Lily, let me just grab some fondant, is when you're making anything like eyes or ears or legs or arms, anything that you want to be the same size, what I tend to do is I get a bit of fondant and I roll it in my hand like that. So I've got one piece. Now, rather than put that down and get the next piece in, what I tend to do is I get my next bit of fondant like this and I keep this one in my hand, I just move it up slightly, and then I roll this one in my hand. Now, your hands might not be as big as mine, so try and give it a go, but by keeping them together, it really helps you to see what the sizes are. So you can get them together and think, oh yeah, they look about a similar size, or I need to pinch a bit away. So rather than doing one and putting it on the side and doing the next one, try and keep them together, and that, that should really help you. The other thing that you can do, if you want to be super duper duper scientific about it all, is you could obviously weigh it. So you could make one, weigh it, and then put the next lot of fondant on the scales, and then you'd get the same. But I think just rolling it in your hands together is a pretty good way of doing it. So there's that one. I hope that helps, Lily. Um, Talia says, I love your dogs. What's the favourite thing that you've made? Oh my. Um made quite a lot of lovely things uh, probably the puffins were a really good one so if you have a look there's a video that shows you how to make the puffin birds and I also like the shark so have a look and see if you can find the shark video as well um, and that's really good but thank you Talia and you know you can have a go and try it and a lot of the things that you make use the same skills so if you're doing something like a dog then you're going to have the arms with the paws on the end, which would be the same as a cat. If you're going to do, um, I'm just looking over there because that's where they are. If you're going to do, um, oh, uh, ears. So that's a really good one. So whether you're doing human ears or rabbit's ears, they start off in a circle uh, for humans or they'll start off in a circle and then you'll stretch them out as you want to make them larger for rabbits. So a lot of the things that you actually make start similar shapes. Um, so take, take a look at what I've made and, and you can actually break it down and, and see. So I hope that helps. And, um, oh, this is a really good one. How can I stop my fondant drying out? And that was from Bazin. Bazin, I hope I've said that right, but thank you, Bazin. Um, how can you stop it drying out? A couple of ways that you can do it. Is making sure, I'm just going to lean over, making sure that the fondant that you're not using, you've popped in an airtight bag. So you want to start at the top and then just squeeze the air out of the last bit and then seal it. So there's no air in there at all and that will keep your fondant nice and fresh. The other thing that you can do is you can use a plastic, like a takeaway container, and just make sure that you've maybe wrapped it in cling wrap or pop it in a bag in the container if you're not going to use it for a long time. Even if you're doing something, so if you're making a, a, an animal for a cake topper and you're going to be a little while doing it, 
don't leave the fondant out on the board while you're doing something else just pop it back in the bag and you know you can just fold it over like that and keep it on the side so always try and keep it wrapped up the lights and the air they're always going to dry it out now there's a really good tip actually in my other videos about a product called trex um, and this is um it's like a vegetable product but it's it you pop it on your hands it's like a vegetable fat pop it on your hands and then you can work it into the fondant and it really will sort of bring it nice and soft and sort of bring it back to life uh, so there's a couple of ways there now the last question i've got here is from greta and greta has said please 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 and there is actually six pleases on here please can you make an elephant so greta especially for you this is what we're going to do today we're going to make an elephant so are you ready if you've got any other questions let me know if not let's carry on okay so now we're getting on to the elephant so a few little things that we need today we've got a couple of tools we've got a little brush ready for some water i've got a circle cutter now if you haven't got one of these just try and find maybe a lid of something that's nice and clean that you can use i'm choosing one color of fondant now this is sort of a marbled gray any colour fondant that you've got. I'm just going to go for one colour so it makes it a little bit easier. So a pink, a blue, a white, black, whatever you want to go for. And then here I've got some black edible beads and I'm going to use these for the elephant's eyes. Now if you haven't got these then you can use two little bits of black fondant uh, for the eyes as well. So if you haven't got those then just grab yourself some black fondant. So let's get going. Now what's the first thing we do? We always squidge. So we're going to give it a good old squidge and what this is doing is making it nice and soft for us to work with, which is good. So look at that, oh lovely and soft. So what I'm going to do is pinch a little bit off there. So I've probably got, oh not it's probably the size of maybe a just a large ping pong ball, something like that. I'm going to give it a go in our hands. And then what we want to try and do is we want to try and make a nice flat bottom which is nice and round and then it goes up so almost like a cone so we're going to give it a little squidge in our hands and then i'm just going to roll it back and forward and i'm only going to sort of squash this bit in so if i show you can you see the bottom bit is still round and it's going up to a point and that's what we want so pop him nice on the board there and then once you've got your shape that you're quite happy with and this is going to be the body of the elephant so depending on how tall you want your elephant to be so if i lay that on my mat you can see how how tall that is sort of relative to my finger there so we've got that now what we want to do is we want to make the legs so we're going to have two at the front and two coming around the side so another little bit of your fondant there giving that a good old squidge and we're going to make a sausage so in our hands we're just going to roll it into a circle and then we're going to roll it into a sausage okay so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the length of our legs is correct so i'm just going to get a little cocktail stick to show so this is the bottom where the foot's going to go and obviously you don't want it to go that far up so just mark in there where you want it to go so I'm going to pinch that bit off there and then you want two that length oh look at that that's just pure luck so make that nice and tidy the bit that you've just done a little bit flat and then this we want to keep nice and round but flat as well so can you see the shape there we've got quite fat and then it's going thinner and this is the part that's going to stick to the body so we'll do the same on the other one so tidy up the edge that we've just had Got a nice round edge there just make sure he sits up nicely now to do the elephant's feet there's a couple of different ways you can do now this is called the smiling tool the smiler tool if you can see that there and you can see why it's got the little smiley bit on there so what i'm going to do now if you haven't got one of these you can use a straw and you're just going to poke it in the bottom so it just makes some indentations on the bottom there can you see that let's do the same with the other one so we're going to go one two three so can you see that and then what we're going to do is get a little bit of our water 
and stick it on there and then we're going to stick our feet on okay one there a little bit of water and we're going to stick the other one on i'm just going to pop him up right make sure okay so put the feet slightly together there and there you have it so there's the front feet and the front legs and then we're going to do the ones and these ones are going to come around the side exactly the same exactly the same so roll it into a sausage try and make sure that it's nice and even like this and then you want to make sure the end is nice and flat but round okay you're going to put some feet markings on there just the same as you've done before and then we're going to bring that to the front now you want it to line up with that front foot there so we're going to line it up there and then just take it around the body and you will see where you need to cut it off so I would go there so I'm going to just cut that one off now if I sneak a bit of water in there I probably can get away with not moving it so just rub that in and then do the same again so making sure the end is nice and flat we're going to do the same with the feet so three of those one two three you're going to sit that oops you're going to sit that there making sure that it's nice and level around the body and then i'm just going to pinch that off there and if i get my little bit of water and pop it in and then i can just slide the the water on there so there we have the bottom part of our body now while we're talking about the body let's just do the tail so a little tiny sausage now in our hands and then pinch one end and that's going to be the end that sticks a tiny bit of water on the bottom and then on it goes and you can do whatever you want with the tail you could curl it if you want you could do whatever you want to do with the tail make it long short the, the tails in an elephant are, are not going to be terribly long on here as well so whatever you feel like doing there so there we have the base of our elephant so nicely done now what we're going to do is we're going to pop our cocktail stick in the top now don't just pop your cocktail stick right in because it will squidge the fondant. Always make sure you twist. So put it on the top and twist it down. And then you won't actually squish the fondant down. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move him there and then we can get on with the head. So you want a nice size shaped ball. So that's the size I'm going to go for. So this is smaller than the body size. Get it in a nice circle in your hands. Now what we want to start to do is start to shape it. So we want to get the trunk coming out. So rather than it being a head and then we put the trunk on, we're going to make this into that shape. So what we want to do is we want to start, if we can, to just pull out the trunk. Now you can do it this way, like I'm showing you. So turning it and moving a trunk. You can use one hand and start to squidge it out, making sure that you keep the same nice round shape there as the head okay and then I'm just going to move that round so depending on how long sometimes you might want the trunk to come down to the legs you might want it to go to the side so whatever you're sort of feeling there now I'm going to make mine a little bit longer so I want to keep that round face I'm just pulling the fondant out and I'd like mine just to I'm going to try and wrap it round like that so that's how I'd like mine to go so while we've got the head, I'm just going to use one of these tools and I'm going to make the eye shape. So two holes in there for the eyes. And this is where I'm going to use these beads. Now, if you haven't got these, just use a different colour for the eye. Um, these are edible beads and they do last a long time. So you can get hold of them. They're good. So a little bit of water in those holes there. And in we go with the eyes. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of extra grey just to make a kind of eyebrow. So using our C for cake fingers, going to make just a little bit of a, an eyebrow there. And then make another one 
and then just get our little bit of water and go over the top you could do this in a darker colour as well if you want to just going to edge that over so the point is going to go outwards so the pointy bit will go outwards I'm just going to put that on there okay and then what I'm going to do is just put a couple of lines just in the trunk just so he looks like where the trunk is bending slightly okay so just some lines with your cocktail sticks there okay and shall we give them a hole underneath and that's going to be where he can eat his nice food and then on the top there now what's he missing mm. what do elephants have that's nice and big and sit here some beautiful ears so are we ready for the ears now what you can do is you can just squidge together and you can make two circles or if you're not very good at making things the same sort of shape and size then you can roll your fondant out and you can use your cutter. Now oh, I've forgotten my rolling pin so we're just going to roll it out like this and do two circles. Okay so if you don't have one of these try and find something in the house maybe a lid of something that's nice and clean that you can use or you could just get two balls in your hand and just try and make sure that they're the same size. So I've got my circle, I'm just going to take the raggedy edges off, and that one as well, and then I'm going to add some water to the top of the head, just a little bit of water on there, and then we're going to attach our ears. So on the ears go, okay, so keeping them nice and shapely there, and another one on there. Now what you might find is the ears don't stand up properly. Now don't worry about that. What you can do is you can shape the ears and leave them to dry a little bit, maybe half an hour, and then try and put them on. Um, or you can try and get something to stand up next to it that will sort of, maybe with a bit of tissue on the end. So if you've got a little paint pot with some tissue that will hold sort of the elephant's ears up. I'm being very lucky today that they're they're standing up. Now there you go, there is your beautiful elephant that you've made out of fondant. So well done, I hope you've done well and I hope the questions helped you at the start as well. Please keep sending the questions in or sending the pictures in, I'd love to see what you make and until next time have a really good week. Take care.